Welcome. I'm really so excited to be here and to be leading worship with our joint summer worship services. In fact, as far as I know, we've never actually hosted in the St. Mark's building. We're not accessible, and so we've shared the space with St. Peter's and St. Andrew's. And I'm very happy that uh, St. Peter's crew has come to help us accomplish this. So I'm thinking about all those wonderful things of summer, the gatherings, and of course they're different this year. And I brought something just to get us thinking about our own uh, special times with loved ones. It's a jar of blueberry jam. And I love to pick berries with uh, my loved ones and to make things to give away. And so I brought this and I want you to think about the ways that your gatherings are special to you and the ways that you draw people into those reunions. And a reminder that wherever we gather, we gather in the light of Christ who unites us. Our opening hymn this morning is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. It's found at Voices United 232. God's welcoming love envelops us all in a joyful embrace and wraps the whole creation into one circle of love. God gathers sisters and brothers all over the earth into one family. We worship together, separated by physical space, yet one in spirit. Come, let us worship our gracious God. We praise God who calls us to gather in worship. 
Let us pray. God of all blessings, you have blessed us with family that is ours through baptism and friendship, through blood and adoption. Where once there was anger and resentment between us, you call us to make peace. Where once there was fear and mistrust between us, you have taught us to love. How good it is when there is peace and love. Where divisions in the human family keep us from being reconciled, help us to do the difficult work of justice making. Let our hearts be softened so that all your children might one day soon truly feel at peace in your house. Amen. Genesis 45, verses 1 to 15. Joseph is no longer able to control his feelings in front of his servants, so he ordered them all to leave the room. No one else was with him when Joseph told his brothers who he was. He cried with such loud sobs that the Egyptians heard it, and the news was taken to the king's palace. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But when his brothers heard this, they were so terrified that they could not answer. Then Joseph said to them, Please come closer. They did, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be upset or blame yourselves because you sold me here. It was really God who sent me ahead of you to save people's lives. This is only the second year of famine in the land. There will be five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor reaping. God sent me ahead of you to rescue you in this amazing way and to make sure that you and your descendants survive. So it's not really you who sent me here, but God. He has made me the king's highest official. I am in charge of his whole country. I am the ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and tell him that this is what his son Joseph says. God has made me ruler of all Egypt. Come to me without delay. You can live in the region of Goshen where you can be near me, you, your children, your grandchildren, your sheep, your goats, your cattle, and everything else that you have. If you are in Goshen, I can take care of you. There will still be five years of famine, and, and I do not want you, your family, and your livestock to starve. Joseph continued, Now all of you, and you too, Benjamin, can see that I am really Joseph. Tell my father how powerful I am here in Egypt, and tell him about everything that you have seen. Then hurry and bring him here. He threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and began to cry. Benjamin also cried as he hugged him. Then, still weeping, he embraced each of his brothers and kissed them. After that, his brothers began to talk with him. Psalm 133. How wonderful it is, how pleasant for God's people to live together in harmony. It is like the precious anointing oil running down from Aaron's head and beard, down to the collar of his robes. It is like the dew on Mount Hermon, falling on the hills of Zion. That is where the Lord has promised his blessing, life that never ends. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Summers always offer the opportunity for a trip down memory lane. Strawberry socials, picnics, potlucks, fishing derbies, summer festivals and fall fairs, getting together with loved ones, family reunions. Summers are for reenacting the best of times and considering how truly blessed we are. Maybe, like me, you are all looking forward to hugging when we are able and tears of joy when we can all be together. In the meantime, we can take comfort. God is at work in our small social circles and in our family dynamics. I remember gatherings with the cousins at my maternal grandparents' usually around fair time. Some of the best features of those summers were playing on the wide veranda, rain or shine, making forts in the lilac bushes, 
walking barefoot to the beach. One time, we had to cross the freshly tarred road coming back. Grandpa had a heck of a time getting our feet clean. And food, as many hot dogs and corn on the cob as you wanted, ice cream dripping down your our chins, and being free to run while the adults visited and caught up on the news. Of course, before the days of social media, when we only had Canada Post and Ma Bell to help us stay in touch. Family reunions are a blessing. They are also a big deal. You are reminded where you come from. You are told that you are loved and kissed frequently on the cheeks by aunts you've never met who comment on how much you've grown. At one reunion a few years back, we were surprised that we, now grown-up cousins, liked each other and wondered why we didn't put more effort into staying in touch. If only all our days could be lazy days in the porch swing with a gentle breeze and a refreshing beverage with nary a care in the world. But of course, all our days are not like that. They can't really be like that until such days can be enjoyed by every single one, until the kingdom comes in all its fullness. For now, our days include work and struggle and hardship, family conflict, food insecurity, overwork for some and unemployment for others, great health for some and debilitating illness for others, privilege for some and marginalization for others. Will we ever get it just right? If it seems hopeless, we are reminded again and again through scripture that God can work in adversity. God can advance God's purposes even in our less than perfect families. God can bless us with joyful summer days even when we have yet much work to do to help God's reign to come. Family reunions in general are a lot of fun, much work for the organizers, but worth it. We should do this more often. We will for sure. Then we don't. Joseph was having a family reunion and enjoying playing a little trick on his brothers. It was not the school summer break, um, but calamity that brought them face to face. There was a famine in the land. There was nowhere else to turn for resources but that fertile Nile region. Egypt to the rescue again. We can't escape that we are tied to other nations for support in times of crisis. The main purpose of the story about Joseph is to show how the Hebrews came to be in Egypt. The Joseph story shows how God uses our worst sins, sufferings, and failures and gives us a blessing, an outcome we don't deserve. St. Augustine wrote, God judged it better to bring good out of evil than to allow no evil to exist. Our faith roots are in this patriarchal family. They're nobody special, it could have been any family, but out of the blue, God has chosen this family and set them apart to bless the world. A family of dreamers, Abraham, Jacob, Joseph. God has been involved with this family since promises were made to Abraham and Sarah and the covenant renewed with Jacob. God's random act of kindness to this family has a purpose, to pay it forward so that all the nations will be blessed. Joseph was the favorite son, born to Jacob's favorite wife. Jacob adored this son of his old age and made Joseph a long robe with sleeves. Some translations call it a coat of many colors. To be sure, no work was being done in those fancy clothes. Imagine Joseph going out to the fields in this dress-up outfit, his Sunday best. The brothers were understandably jealous. In fact, they hated Joseph. They hated him even more after he told them of his dream of them all bowing down to him. They conspired to kill him, but in the end sold him for 20 pieces of silver to a caravan of traders en route to Egypt. Joseph grows up in Egypt and becomes a man of God through his suffering. 
the gift of dream interpretation makes him very successful and eventually puts him in an enviable position with his family. The big question is, will he get even? Or will he be the blessing that God intended? It's hard to imagine and believe that God can keep those promises, given that everything seems to go off the rails. We see in this biblical story that deception is sometimes used as a means to get the right results, as in it's okay to lie if it's for peace. We see God working, we see character taking shape. As people learn to live in God's ways, they prosper. We see that it takes a long time to get there. It doesn't seem to matter to God how we are at first. It's what we become under God's guidance, how life shapes us, how we are able to see through flashes of insight or in dreams, in both the good and the bad experiences, that God is with us. We are on our own journey of becoming a blessing to others. I love the stories of these complex family relationships. They're so true to life. Revenge, gratitude, reconciliation. These biblical characters are flawed human beings, just like we are. My own family grows more interesting with adoption, divorce and remarriage, blended families, step-nieces and nephews, grandchildren. Joseph's family and yours and mine are part of the whole human family. Perhaps you are longing, like I am, for that time when we can get together, when we are able to gather in large crowds, personal family and communities of faith and neighbors all, and hug each other and receive kisses on the cheeks and remember whose we are. And hopefully, in this journey time, this difficult time of confronting so many things that have been wrong in the human family. We will have worked through many disputes, differences, tricks, and unfairness. Hopefully we will have come to value each one, every place of origin, every person who we claim as parent, all our rich diversity of language, gender identity, sexual orientation, ethnicity. We know that our reunions will be times of abundance and joy for God, and we are invited to be glad too. How pleasant it is when God's people are together. Thanks be to God. Amen. We offer our gifts, O God, and our varied ministries that we may work together to fulfill your purposes in creation. Amen. Let us pray. Come, all you who are brokenhearted, all who are oppressed, all who are afraid, all who hunger and thirst, all who rejoice, all who celebrate, all who are healing, all whom the world counts as last and least. Come, you are welcome here. God created a wide world of welcome, filled with good things, with food and drink for all beings. God nurtured a wide world of welcome and provides a table of welcome for the universe, a loaf of bread, a loaf of life, a loaf of compassion, a loaf to strengthen, nourish, and sanctify, a cup of water, a cup of sacrifice, a cup of covenant, a cup to renew, refresh, and make whole. As we gather at the table, we proclaim our praise and thanksgiving for God's great love and mercy. Gracious God, hear us as we lift up our loved ones and our concerns in prayer. We pray for the church and its varied ministries, its communities of faith and its leaders, 
especially today, St. Paul's United Church in Thunder Bay, Porcupine United Church, St. Andrew's by the Sea in South Baymouth. We pray for our own faith communities who share in summer worship. May each person and their loved ones enjoy a summer that brings refreshment and renewal. We pray for the safety and well-being of all, especially those named in prayer and those named only in our hearts and those whose concerns are known only to you, gracious God. Keep us faithful until we gather once more. We pray for the world, neighbors and strangers, for all who struggle to make ends meet, all who suffer illness and its effects on body and soul, all who are lonely, all who need safe drinking water and refreshing rains to grow crops. We pray for, pray for our scientists in every field of endeavor and for those who tend to our safety and well-being in fields of medicine, government, community service. We pray for people in places of power that in their decision-making they would exercise holy manners and offer leadership that is just and fair to all people. We pray for ourselves in our times of growing weary, in our times of uncertainty about the future. Keep us ever mindful of your presence with us in all life circumstances. Bless us and hear us as we pray the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is In Christ There Is No East or West, Voices United, number 606. Go to serve God with grace and strength. Go confidently and unafraid. And may the God who created you in love, the Christ who redeems you, and the Spirit who is our helper, go with you wherever your journey may lead. Amen. <laughs>